Greetings and welcome to the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences online module on preparing to study and studying for the exam. Pop quiz. How many days before an exam should you begin studying? A. Two to three days. B. Three to five days. C. Four to five days. D. Five to six days. E. Seven to ten days. If you guessed E. Seven to ten days, you are absolutely correct. You should study seven to 10 days before an exam. The objective of studying is not to teach yourself the material for the first time, but to help yourself commit the information into your long-term memory. Another great reason to start studying seven to 10 days before the exam is that it will allow you to break the information into smaller chunks. Psychology studies consistently show that you learn the same amount in four one-hour study sessions distributed over four days, as you do in one six-hour marathon study session. That is because between study times, while you're doing things like working out, playing an instrument, or sleeping, your mind subconsciously works on absorbing what you've learned. Tell your professor we said sleeping is a part of your studying. Think about it. Which would you prefer? Studying for four hours over four days and retaining four hours of material, or cramming for six hours one day and only retaining four hours of material? Ultimately, it's your choice. A third reason to study seven to 10 days before the exam is that it will allow you to study for multiple exams without being overwhelmed. Ever had that week when you have two, three, or even four exams in the same week? By starting to study in advance, you will give yourself more time to review the material and ultimately remember it. If you're studying correctly, there are several things you should be doing. Some of these items are things that you do in preparation for studying, and some of these are things that you do when you're actually studying. Can you identify the actions that you would do prior to studying? Look thoroughly. Before studying for an exam, you should be taking good notes. In addition, you should be summarizing the chapters, putting slides into your own words, using flashcards if those work for you, teaching others, creating mind maps and concept charts, outlining the chapter, going to office hours, and using your highlighter. As you begin to study, you should reread your notes out loud. Not only does this help you review the information, but this technique involves more of your senses. Think about it. You are seeing the words, saying them, and hearing the words. All of this works to help you retain the information. Form study groups, but only if that works for you. Make sure there is a good mix of people in your study group. It may feel good to be the smartest person in your study group, but who will explain the concepts that you're unclear about to you? Make sure there's at least one person that grasps the material better than you do. And you may be thinking, but what about the people that you wanna help? Remember that teaching is one of the best ways to learn. That said, if you have one or two people in your group that needs help with the concepts, that's okay too. Listen to recorded lectures and use visual aids like slides or pictures from the textbook to make things more real and involve more of your senses. Make sure to study over time. That's where the seven to 10 days comes back in again. If you begin studying over time, you will attain more information more gradually. Practice the exam as best as you can by replicating the conditions of the exam and naturally timing yourself. And finally, use associations. Relate what you're studying to something personal and thus memorable. If you're learning about photosynthesis, for example, Think back to the pea or bean that you planted in grade school and how it responded to sunlight. Is motivation a challenge for you? There are many ways to stay motivated, but I'll touch on three today. One way is to determine a reward. After studying for an hour, you can have a treat, for example, um, go working out, switch subjects, things like that. Another idea is to start with the hardest or least desirable subject and work towards a subject you enjoy. If your motivation is to get to your favorite class, you may find that you feel differently about studying. Lastly, determine the significance of the activity. An example of this would be, I need to study for this exam because it's worth 30% of my grade. This class is a requirement to graduate and I'll likely need this knowledge when I start working after college. Thus bringing us to the end of this module. Thank you for watching. Created using Powtoon.